Welcome back to another episode of Real Chums, where chatting about movies feels like hanging out with friends. I'm your host, Marcel, and with me is my co-host, Danny. This week, we discuss The Village, directed and written by M. Night Shyamalan, starring Joaquin Phoenix, Bryce Dallas Howard, William Hurt, Sigourney Weaver, and many more. In this episode, we break down Shyamalan's powerful directorial decisions, the palpable chemistry from Joaquin Phoenix and Bryce Dallas Howard, and we discuss the themes and true meaning of this film. But before we roll that intro, be sure to subscribe wherever you get your podcast and turn on notifications so you never miss an episode. Join in on that conversation by heading over to YouTube uh, at Real Chumps to subscribe and see all the other cool content that we're doing and throwing up over there. With that being said, let's roll that intro. All right, Marcel, I have the pop quiz question of Ooh, the day. Pop quiz. <laughs> it's just one question. Uh, okay. Uh, so, Bryce Dallas Howard. Mm-hmm. Her father is? Ron Howard. And he starred in Happy Days. Now, his co-star in this show is also Bryce's godfather. Who is it? I can only think of one person from that show. There's lots of famous people there are a lot of famous people uh but i'm gonna go with the fonts hey. it is the fonts known as his actual name is henry henry Lee. winkler right? That's Win- right winkler winkler yep he also was in one of our other movies that we reviewed which one was it uh he was a principal in uh the, in scream that we talked about last year that's right we're gonna be watch- watching scream 2, two later this month and if you haven't watched our episode on scream one go check it out well, after you watch this episode. Yeah. Uh, he was so weird in that movie. <laughs> he was so weird. He's weird in every movie, let's be honest. Oh, he's great. He <laughs> is my favorite, though, in uh, The Water Boy. Yes. <laughs> Dude. Okay. Well, sorry. Uh, I guess sub, sub question. When's the last time you watched The Water Boy? It's been like 15 years. I think there was a time in my life where we probably watched it once a quarter. It was it was on really home. yeah okay my homies and I we all really at least one of my good friends who lived next door to me or close to me he he loved that movie so we ended up watching it a lot um it, it might be one that I still have like half the movie like memorized like Remember the oh, Titans okay yeah yeah but uh that movie I don't know if it aged well I can't remember I can't remember I I, I feel like it actually might have but it's a toss up because it's an Adam Sandler movie in the night. In like the early 2000s, right? I feel like most Adam Sandler movies have an age well. No, I don't know. I don't. I have to revisit. You, you know, they're making a sequel to Happy Gilmore. I did know this. Netflix. Yeah. Which, again, I will forever say kudos to Adam Sandler. The guy just gets to make movies with his homies. Yeah. And he's got a studio that will just put him out. And he I think he does a pretty, like, most of his movies do actually pretty well. They do well. I mean, he has a multi-year, multi-picture contract with Netflix, and that's why that's why he's just doubling down everything on Netflix because they paid him big money yeah. for for him to just produce whatever he wanted there. So good for him for like negotiating that, and yeah, yeah he's at it. Um, okay. Well, we are going to be discussing the village. So we're kicking off our month long segment of Halloween movies. And by Halloween movies, for us, it's... Uh, the Village. The Village. Uh, and we're going to be doing some other ones, but so stay tuned till the end to know what we're going to be discussing next week. But we're kicking it off with The Village. Last year, we did Signs in ha- during Halloween. Correct. And we, Night we loved it. We stuff. loved it. And so we decided to come back to another Sh- Shyamalan movie, and that's The Village. What's What's your relationship with this movie? It just hit 20 years. Like two months oh ago. Oh my gosh, dude, you're right. Two months ago. Um, but like, what's your relationship with this movie? What was your first time watching it? Oh. Your first impressions? What was that like? Okay, so, okay, what year did this come out? 2004. 2004, man. Um, so, I don't remember what grade I was in, but early, maybe beginning junior high, middle, I can't remember, middle. Anyways, um, I remember this coming out. I remember it like, people like secretly talking about it okay. like it was supposed to like they wanted it was because it has the the twist it's a Shyamalan there's yeah. the twist and um and so people didn't want to talk about the twist and but people who did it's like the if you knew but it was a mixed bag and I remember 
I mean, we've talked about this. We're both not like huge fans of uh, scary movies. Mm -hmm. Uh, But I was like, I don't know. So I'm pretty sure that my first time watching this was at a movie night with the with the friends. Okay. I don't remember if it was at my house or a friend's house. I feel like it was at a friend's house. Mm-hmm. And uh and I was I remember finishing the movie thinking that wasn't so bad. <laughs> that wasn't so bad. Uh but also thinking <laughs> that was dumb. <laughs> okay. All right. And I'm really excited that we revisited this. I'm not going to give you my full break thoughts okay. of where I feel cuz I want your pure reaction after I hear your thoughts right. on what your relationship is with this movie. Okay. Um so so how many times do you think you've seen it in between your first time and this most recent time? Uh, I forgot. Yeah. Um I think I've seen it this might be my third time watching oh, it. Oh really? Yeah, okay. I've not seen this. I think I watched it twice maybe in that year that it came or when, after I watched it. So yeah. I watched it once and then in within that year maybe watched, watched it again it. and then however long now correct dang okay um look i i think i've talked about this and go back to our episode on science science but i love Shyamalan. you do like he he started making movies at a very pivotal moment in my life like a very impression like yeah impressionable impressionable yeah there we go thank you english hard um (laughs) but i i love the man and i think there was a lot of hype to this movie just because yes it, the trailer obviously made it seem like oh he's going back to his horror roots right like yeah back to, like the 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 sixth sense if, if you consider that horror um and so like because he did his main movies right he did sixth sense unbreakable signs and then this yeah the village and so like there was a lot of excitement i remember that i i'm pretty sure i saw it like within like the first might have been opening night or like that following weekend um and I just, I must have been, what, like 15? So I i think I came out of that movie and I was just like, I like it. I think I'm missing something. Maybe my young teenage mind isn't getting like the structure. I just felt like the structure or something was off. But for the most part, I liked it. Yeah. And, and, and I think I, I've seen this movie many times throughout the years. I hadn't seen it since like, I don't know. Since I was, I think when, last time I watched this was when my wife and I were still dating. So like, it's been like twelve years since I last seen this. Um, but this movie also was that. This is often referred as like the, the last of the good, Shyamalan movies, <laughs> uh, because then he had Lady in the Water. Yeah. Uh, and then after that he did, After Earth, and no, he did Avatar, The Last Airbender, then After Earth. And then um, he slowly had his his re- renaissance, so to speak, yeah. with with the visit and and, and whatnot. Um, so so this is kind of like th- this movie just was very impactful for me at that time. I saw it in theaters. Would watch it all. We had it in D- on DVD. Um, so how many times have you watched this? I think I've seen this like at least ten times. But I've only seen it. This is my first time watching it in like the last twelve years. Okay, so as an adult with kids, first time in like twelve years. I'm excited to talk about this movie. And I'm excited. Quick synopsis. A a series. Uh, I'll just read the one from the official synopsis. A series of events test the beliefs of a small, isolated countryside village. That is a horrible... <laughs> yeah, I'm going to give you... Give, give me synopsis. your okay, synopsis. Okay. So a presumably small town encounters uh, some uh, interesting uh, events... A village surrounded by a bunch of woods where creatures live in <laughs> are now being warned by said creatures. A small village who has a uh, mysterious uh, agreement with wood creatures yeah. encounters uh, a tragic event in their small town that has them questioning if moving there was the right choice yes okay team effort done <laughs> um let's let's talk about this movie because i i want to jump please i i there's two facts that i forgot about one i forgot bryce howard bryce dallas howard was in this movie this is her debut film this is her debut film i sort of love the fact 
that I were watching this movie, I have a way bigger relationship. I think this movie feels way better than it was that did than I remember it mm -hmm. than uh, every aspect that I think about this. And I think this is again just another testament why M Night Shyamalan and movies in general need to be rewatched at different points in your life. Yes. Um, and I think I'm really pumped to talk about it. Specifically, I think no, Joaquin, um, Bo, and we have Joaquin Phoenix with a double duty. We had Joaquin Phoenix last. Uh, yeah, we did Joker last week. We did Joker last week, so I double you know, whammy, I, double whammy with Joaquin, which I loved, um, and like young Joaquin, like yeah. I, you know, we get him. This is like same signs era. He's working with, um, he and Bryce and Joaquin have such a great chemistry on film. And I kind of just, I mean, I, you know, we get her from the most recent films and whatever you might feel about her. She's, she's a, a great actress. She's an incredible actress. And, and, and I think, uh, what a great choice. So, so, uh, uh, Knight saw her in, in theater and she had done a small play and mm. said, I, that's who I need to cast for me for, for the role of Ivy. Um, so he went and offered it straight to her. Um, but, but yeah, this was her first debut film. And also to go up against Joaquin Phoenix. Yes. Who was very well established by this point, right? And, and be able to like keep up. Yeah. And, and, and be a solid co star with Joaquin. And I always forget like how little he isn't, or not how little, but like, like halfway through the movie, the guy's gone. Like we don't see him for the rest of the movie, and she carries this movie on her shoulders. Also, the fact that she played someone that is blind, I think that's that has to be also that adds another element to your acting, especially for your debut film to to be able to bring such a character to to life. And I love everything about Bryce Dallas Howard in this movie. So I didn't, I, I didn't realize this was her first film and I was going to bring up the fact that one of my biggest gripes was the fact that I felt that her blind acting was rough. Okay. But rec but I wasn't like, it, it was rough, but it wasn't a deal breaker for me. Yeah, yeah. And I think the, there's two, the, the one reason was because um, what she's got, she's not quite fully blind. She has some sense, sixth sense of some kind that she she's able to witness people's colors mm -hmm, of, mm -hmm. you know, an essence of aura, whatever you want to call it. Um, and if it's the fact, and then the other two would be the fact that I didn't realize, but now I know is the fact that this is her first time acting. And if with that being the case, I think it did, she did pretty great. Yeah, yeah. And and I think that is a criticism that, that this movie has had is that, okay, like she's literally sprinting <laughs> down a hill several times and like... <laughs> In almost headed to the woods, uh, how how could someone like that pull that off, right? But but I putting that aside, I think her performance um, and her ability to to emote having you know quote unquote having this character being blind um, is is really powerful. Especially those scenes that where she has with her and Joaquin are just incredible. So good, and I love I love. Look, I'll, I'll tell you right away, my, my favorite scene is that porch scene with her and Joaquin. Oh, like, I, I've, I'd forgotten about that scene. And watching it this last time, I was like, oh, that is so powerful. It is really powerful. It's what, what is it? What did... I, okay, I have thoughts. Mm -hmm. um, what, are the, what are the things in that scene that you find make it so powerful? There is, and 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 I'll, I'm going to get ahead of myself a bit right here, but Shyamalan decides to not throughout the whole movie, but a lot of times throughout the movie, he, and and you can talk more technical about this, but like he mounts, or he puts the camera right up on her, and we have her centered and framed, and we just follow her a lot of times. We're not seeing anything around us or what's happening besides her we're just following her as she makes her way to 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 see um what's his face and what's joaquin's character's name uh lucius, lucius. lucius. like to see lucius like after he got stabbed right like that whole sequence it's like 30 35 seconds where she walks out of the house and we're just tracking her 
and people are walking by her, but we're she's walking forward, the camera's walking backwards, right? Wait, is this to the porch scene or is this to the... Hold on. Okay. Uh, okay. I'm, oh, I'm okay. making the big... The, oh, the oh scene. You're, I see what you're saying. But like, I love I love those tracks shots, right? Um, and we start that porch scene like that, where she comes out of out of the house and we just track her. We, we're not even sure that... We don't even know what she's doing out yeah. there. Yeah. And then as we're pulling back in we see uh lucius in the scene and so like i I love this decision of a blind character and we are immersed in that because we are not aware of our surroundings Mm. just like her i think any other director would have done a long shot had her come out or even like when she's walking to go see lucius and and he's been stabbed like would have followed her and, and given us several shots to like give us this feeling of, of panic or, or hysteria happening, right? But that porch scene, we just slowly follow her. And again, we talked about this in, in, in our episode of Unbreakable. In Science, he does what he did in Science, sorry. Um, he doesn't do an over-the-shoulder shot. He just has them both um, in the frame and just holds the camera. As they talk, as they have this mono, this dialogue that's like two minutes long, and it's just so powerful because I'm reminded that I'm I uh, I mean obviously I'm not a, a, a cinematographer or, or camera operator, but I definitely would have been that guy on set would have been like oh let's do a, let's position let's do an over the shoulder <laughs> let's do a two shot. shot right and 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 let's do it from over the shoulder but also from the front that way we can also see and he doesn't i love that we only see half their faces and 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 just the lighting is perfect uh we sit on them for those 2 minutes they he expresses his frustrations of how he if he wants to lead let him lead um but she expresses how like he has this color and you're not going don't ask me about what your color is and like she's being flirty and they confess their love for each other and i just love that shot without a single cut without moving the camera and panning around them it just stays centered and we just see them on 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 the screen there the entire time you i couldn't have said it better myself I actually I, I have a couple of th- I have please, a couple of things please okay so one i'm so glad we're starting with this um i love that scene as well it is also my favorite scene and it's very much for the same reasons i love that she's start there's i actually had to, I had to rewind it cuz she she has some kind of thing and she wakes up mm-hmm. right and we follow her and we're like why is she up and yeah. I, and part of me is like is she really blind <laughs> is she really blind? um but it doesn't matter because what happens next is we get lucian lucius, lucius yeah. in the frame and he i am just reminded i just uh i'm gonna i'm gonna be doing a a, a little first impressions on wolves in in Wolves is the complete opposite of what I'm about to say. But in this, Shyamalan has an amazing, he, when he tracks, there's purpose, mm-hmm. but he is so good at just holding the frame. Um, and specifically using two shots. And okay, when I say two shots, usually people call this as a two shot as um, you have two options. You have the one where it's like, you're they're both people, characters are, are in frame and they're just talking to each other, which there's a great YouTube video, and I think it's from every frame of painting or one of the, or or nerd writer. Um, I can't remember. I'll link it. I'll, I'll show a little video, and then I'll, I'll I'll link it down below in the show notes. That talks about the lost art of the two shot, which is just having these two characters like these two characters on. Where you don't cut. Mm-hmm. Just let the be. The, the other alternative is like the two shot is the over the shoulder two shot, where you're you know you have the two shot, then you go to the over the shoulder shot on one character and the other character, and you have coverage mm-hmm. to cut back there. But there's something absolutely, I don't want to say visceral, but it's like the word that I can think. Yeah, but yeah. It, it feels raw. it's raw. It yes. feels raw. It feels as if you're you're there. You're just you're like you, a person. You're you're a fly on the wall watching these two individuals like break down yeah and, and be vulnerable yeah and it's and it, i love i i just um and, and so like that scene and i think i think what he when i think about this shot i think of that picture where you it's the image of the of like do you see a face or do you see two faces or a, a vase yeah yeah 
in it's not that like he's trying to create an optical illusion, but I think that inspired this shot. Mm-hmm. And it's this idea that like two people who have a connection that care for each other and they're in this this world this this society that have odd norms and they're just one you know lucius who wants to do good by the people but thinks and has a, has feels that the, he he there should be more to be done yeah than what is being offered and we have um lucy who ivy ivy i mean yeah. ivy who sp- is strong spirited and sees the world not as everybody else sees it and they just are so complimenting and i i hurt that we didn't get more of a build up before lucius dies do you think he died oh he doesn't die you're right i just get stabbed <laughs> i mean like stabbed you're right yeah, i just yeah. it's <laughs> Half the movie's like, is how could this guy actually be dead? Like he got stabbed like four times. Yeah, yeah. I think it was more because you just He's, let's let's talk about that scene though. With Noah, he comes in, also really great, also great. And here's what I loved about it is that, and again, as someone who who isn't watching, I don't know, Paranormal Activity is that the movie? Is that is what those movies are called? Yeah, sure. <laughs> Um, I, I think I, I think it is correct, <laughs> right? The, the found one, footage, yeah, yeah, yeah. whatever. Ones, yeah, yeah. Um, I I love when you use camera techniques to create suspension. Yes, right. In that scene, it we he 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 walks or what's his face? Lucius turns around and then he just looks down and he's been stabbed, right? And then he falls to the ground. Well, we, well, we got to back up and just say, yeah, he he. We don't, he, like, we know he's talking to somebody. Yes. It doesn't even show, it doesn't reveal who this individual is. Right? No, we, we know he, because he, he knocks on the door, he opens the door, Noah's crying. Oh, that's right. And, and so like, but he turns around to go grab something and then. But, but he fills the frame. We, yeah. It's like, but okay. What I guess what I'm saying is like, we slightly forget we slightly forget because he, he consumes the frame. He's sitting exactly. frame. We we're like following him up to like the he's talking. Uh, he's going to get something from the. He the, turns around to get something from the table. Yeah. Turns back to see to talk to uh, Noah, and then he just looks down and we just see the knife in him. Right. He falls and then Noah panics, whatever, and then he just stabs, keeps stabbing him. That's what I'm saying. Like, how does this guy not? Yeah. Be dead? Anyways, but the camera which I loved, is looking at them, and then it just slowly goes to the right. It pans slowly to the right, down, and it just it just gets, it focuses on the, I don't know what it was, like a, like a, a burner, a stove at its legs, and it just zooms into the legs yes. for like five seconds, probably longer. And it cut, does a match. It's like, it's like not a match cut, but to a... a, a and, uh, you, and you just hear them in the background, like you just hear like the pounding, yeah. and and then uh, Lucius just kind of like groaning out of pain. But that's it; like it just goes in, and it. I think that just adds more, more of the horror element to it uh, that, that we are not seeing it, and and a puddle of blood and and blood splashing everywhere or whatever it may be. Um, that we don't we don't have that. We just f- focus on the legs of this stove burner. And it just goes in, slowly zooms into it. Why do you think he focused on this? I don't know why he focused on that particular, but but I was reading that originally that that's that shot had the sound design like very like aggr- vicious, vicious, I aggressively. Actually, that was something that I, I noted. I was like, it's pretty, imp- um, I wonder if it would have like changed some kind of rating or it did actually it or the movie originally had an r, r rating, rating because of that scene oh and so then they came back and they took away the sound and they, you you hear it very muted it's not very splashy or whatever you just hear some thumping um and then it just zooms into into that into the stove and and then it cuts right 
Um, but because of because they took out the sound, um, then it got its PG-13 rating. But here's how I got it, is that, again, we, we throughout this movie, we're just flies on the wall, so to speak. And it's so, it's so heartbreaking. I don't know. Maybe, I've been in those situations where like things are kind of like weird and awkward that you just kind of slowly look away and then uh-huh. you know you like <laughs> you're like I don't want to be here. I feel like I'm getting that. Like like I I've made this connection with the character of Lucius and I'm seeing him get stabbed over and over and over again that I just have to kind of look away and the camera does that for me. Yeah, yeah. Okay, I see that. And it's it, it, it's such a unique choice to do. I I Speaking of the his, I don't know. I just um, so much about this film when it comes to the cinematography, the camera breakdown. Like he's on sticks, or is just holding the camera, just being held. Like it's on sticks. It's locked off. Sticks or tripod. Uh, for those who don't know, um, it's it's locked off. Um, and there's so many shots, especially at the beginning, especially with adults. This is something that I wanted to know if you. Especially with you watching it more as a kid and then now as an adult. Mm-hmm. Why do you think he locks off shots and he doesn't cut to the speaker? But we're often like he he sets up the shot, it's locked off. Sometimes it's very symmetrical, sometimes it's not. Sometimes it's but the person who's speaking isn't facing the camera. Yeah. Yeah. We're getting the back of it and we're getting, we're looking at the people who are listening or like engaging with that. And I mean, part of it, I think it's building attention. Like something's wrong here. So I think like that's a portion of it. Yeah. But I wanted to know what, what is your, like, do you have thoughts on this? I do. I do. Thank you for that awesome question, Danny. Um, I think two things. One, because we, because our main character is blind, I think he's trying to help us get into that position of of we can't see the individual's face we can't see how they're reacting we can't see how they're emoting what they're trying to say therefore he's not letting us see their face right we're, we're almost trying to live the part of, of ivy so that way we can just focus on what is being said and get the mood right the feeling without having the character tell you how you should feel through their emotions through their facial emotions so I think I think it's a conscious decision of our, our you know our character our main character is blind she wouldn't be able to see this individual saying this therefore I want you as an audience to not see it either rather focus on what they're saying and so I just want to have a follow up with it's like so you're saying you feel that he wants to set the tone before we fully understand that Lucy is the main is the key character that, that I do the, the, sorry yeah. freaking why do I have Lucy stuck in my head <laughs> um, the Ivy is the main character. For it, or like that she's blind, and so that that connection that we want you to that, that something's off uneasy, and part of it's because Ivy's has something like she has to live with an uneasy life circumstance. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So so we're we're vicariously living as she is by not being able to see. Therefore, we as an audience are not being able to see, and I think that's a very conscious decision that he makes is experience what this individual is saying without being able to see what they're saying through their emotions, right? Mm. One. Okay. Second, I, and, and maybe we'll, we'll, we can talk a little bit more about the themes uh, of this movie, but I mean, th- this movie is, re- it really focuses on fear and control. Yeah. And M. Night. And trauma. And, and trauma, right? And, and, and a few other things, right? But uh, M. Night Shyamalan really talked about, th- this was his first post 9-11 movie. Okay, he wrote this oh, after 9-11. Okay. And, and this movie, if you look at it from that perspective, it, it talks, it, it's talking about a, 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 an organization a, a, or a, a community that puts fear into its people with unnamed and unseen terrors, right? And, and you know, the, the, the Bush era uh, post 9-11 was very much focused on on that right uh it it perp- it created a culture um that that we we were told stories about this unknown f- f- terror from a faraway land and and we had to be very much you know 
in in how do I want to say this? We as a society had to you know kind of bubble ourselves bubble ourselves off and 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 be aware of the of the terror that's out there um, and 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 how it's impacting us. And so so I think it's also that feeling of there is an unseen terror unseeing horror that's out there and and not only do they not see the creatures but we're also not seeing individuals faces because of that theme of of, of an un- unknown fear an unknown terror yeah. that's out there um and so i think those are kind of at least for me that's kind of what i got out of this out of it this time is that he's trying to tell us a story from the point for us to immerse ourselves as we were the, the lead character here of, of Ivy, not being able to see individuals' faces and really just focus on what they're saying, but also this this unknown fear, this unknown terror that that was very much encapsulated all of America after post nine uh, after nine eleven, right, with the Bush administration. Um, but that's that's kind of what that's how I understood these decisions of of not being able to see characters' faces. I don't know if I feel that he's. I don't know if I fully agree with you that he's trying to make it, us feel like we are like Ivy mm-hmm. in the sense that how she would say. It. I do maybe if I were gonna. If I was like thinking through this, I think I do. I would maybe go instead of being it like we, it's we're trying to be perspective of of uh, the blindness, but more of the how she sees the world. She sees the we're experiencing the conversations that are had with the elders um, and some of the other characters, the villagers uh, as um, where people are less that they've, they're muted and the people who have something that is driving them more are shot more vi- like personal. Hmm. Right. Um, that's kind of where I got. I went to, but I again, I, th- I think your perspective is it's, it's actually a good one. I think it's a good one. To thought I just and I think to me, I'm just like this is what I think. Um, what, after you're there, overall, I just think that like this film shot, it, it, it's just a, a reminder of like sometimes, you, like we don't need a lot. If you're gonna have a a drama and you have people, you don't need a lot of movement. Yeah, you know, write good dialogue, find your blocking, find your frame that you want to. And then if you're gonna go to two sh- like to a over the shoulder two shot, great. If you don't like, there's just so many languages. And so, sometimes I feel like with the, the power of technology that we have, that makes it easier to get mo- cameras moving and like really swift stuff. Which I wanted to bring up the fact that like Wolves, amazingly tracked <laughs> shot. That movie has amazing, amazing, amazing tracking cinematography. That is on the flip of like where like every single time the camera's moving, it's fully motivated and it's amazingly beautifully motivated like the way they decide to shoot it yeah is like on the other side like i don't know just, the, just watch it and you can we'll talk about this it. is the wolves on uh, apple tv yes, right with, with brad pitt it, in it should have been in, in theaters i the fact that it's not in theaters is absolutely mind-boggling hmm. um it. in any case yeah i don't know really good stuff so far uh i want to talk a little bit more about the overall um why the village right let's talk about the twist right now mm-hmm. and talk about like what is it because and the reason why i think this is what i i want is like as i started to watch this one as an adult like as a dad um and i start i started to remember and then i you know the movie i'm like what what is this i mean there's so i feel like with where we are now in society yeah there's so this movie is even the, w- sorry i need this is one thing um the the village uh review by eager no, by uh what's his bucket roger roger ebert you want you ready for this oh one? he he hated this movie hated it one star let me you are correct the village is a colossal miscalculation <laughs> a movie based on a premise that cannot support it a premise so transparent it would be laughable where the movie not so deadly solemn it's a flimsy excuse for a plot with characters who move below the one dimensional and enter flatland m night Shyamalan, the writer director has been successful in evoking horror from minimal uh from minimalist stories as in science 
science, mm-hmm. which if you think about it rationally is absurd, but you get too involved to think rationally. He is a, as is a director of considerable skill who evokes stories out of moods, but this time, alas, he took the day off. What a oh. dick. What a dick. <laughs> I'm going to say, that, I'm going to call you out. Like, uh, Robert, Roger, you're a, this, this review. He hated this movie. This is like, look, I don't know if, don't get me wrong. It's not like the best film ever. No, it's not. And it's not one of his best films. No. But you know what? I think looking back at this film, this is not like this. I There's just way bigger meanings here. Yeah. Yeah. And I think this is the same thing we talked about with science. Like when we look at it's this is not um, a suspense. This is not a, a horror creature film. Right. It's telling something much more deeper. Way deeper. Right. And, and 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 going back to this theme of fear and control, like looking at it from again from a post nine eleven Bush administration idea, right? And and it's interesting that he chooses to go to this 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 group of individuals go to this idyllic nineteen late nineteenth century way of living, right? And and post nine eleven post nine nine eleven there was so much conversation around like the good old days, like we as a society were yearning for a life before war war right before the before the war on terror yes right and and everything shifted and and we became a society even more cynical all right we became more jaded because of what happened on american soil and this that's what this no, movie is doing i would say not even just that but like the how it evolved it's yeah. not so much about the initial sequences but i think it's ultimately it's like you know, it evolved into the fact, did we jump again, the gun again in our involvement in this situation? Not yeah. that we, it wasn't warranted, because it was. Sure. Right? Um, and no country should face terrorism. Yeah, yeah. But it caused, it became something that then became, why are we doing this? If we, like, it's something that, like, we can't stop. Right. We're still fighting this war today. But but they're, they're, the the movie is these characters the elders are motivated by wanting to leave because the world the towns they're horrible right um, that they leave that behind but they crave for the good old days for a simpler time and that's kind of the sentiment that we were feeling uh, in America as a, as a as a nation we were wanting more of the simpler times yeah. right. And so, like, looking at that, and then you have these elders who are controlling and are, are controlling through fear and keeping everyone in check by don't go out there because of this unknown terror, right? And that was very much what was happening. And, and to your point, right, no country should face terrorism, right? But it's how these individuals manage to control its citizens in this movie through that fear. Mm-hmm. And, and then it kind of backfires, Right. For them to say, like, have we made the right decision? Did we jump into this too hastily? And it's interesting because uh, what's his face's character, um, uh, Bre- Bren- Bren- uh, Brendan Gleeson's character. Yeah, he moved in here with a family, and they're all dead. <laughs> like they either died of of an illness. Yeah, we start off the scene right, the movie with him holding his kid's coffin, right. Yeah. And he even says later on, like, my wife is also dead. Like, what do I have? Like, I don't have anything. Death, pain, affliction followed them here, right? You can't escape that and and how you react to that. And also the other, like, the other thing that stood out to me is that right before, in 2003, what big Pixar movie came out? Processing. Pixar. Dad and his son. Finding Nemo. Oh my gosh. Okay. That movie is all about a dad post a traumatic event. Yeah. How he, and, and that movie is also very much a post 9-11 movie, right? Yeah. He experiences something so traumatic that now he is in this position of controlling everything around his son. Right. Right. And and that's how we were as a society. And and now you have this movie that these individuals, these elders, 
post something yeah. horrific and traumatic, now they go into a society to control everything around them in hopes to build something better, whether that's right or wrong, right? And that's the the argument that they're trying to decide at the end. But that's that's where they are at, is how do we react to these traumatic moments to either shape us, to define us, or for us to become slaves to 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 these experiences that we have yeah looking if you look at this as a as in it as a as a statement not as like trying to t tell the best story in the world mm -hmm. but as a statement of what is the sediment that is being you know what is ha what's happened it's really great it's, yeah in, in the sense of like um the message like it's not like what do, what am i doing am i doing something now in my family that I am have put borders around and not allowing there. Uh, in fact, um, I had a conversation a while ago with somebody in my neighborhood um, that uh, they were saying that somebody that we knew uh, commented that they had free range children. <laughs> okay. So we have helicopter parent. So uh -huh. this is, one may say the individual who said this comment <laughs> would be considered as a helicopter because they're very hands-on yeah, yeah. with their children, child, uh, with all their children, actually. And then looking at, like, oh, I would never let my kid go out doing these things. Mm -hmm. That's just some free-range parenting right there. Free-range parenting. <laughs> I love that term. <laughs> right? Um, but this idea that, like, that's what people are labeling things as, right? Now... Obviously, like we, there's there's there is a medium of like being up like you have there are kids out there that need way more attention, but there is this sentiment of like I need to be really involved because there's the the world is scary. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And and I think like I don't know as an as a father looking at this film, um, William Hurt's character. Yeah. Right. He, him, I love the the use of the sleight of hand of saying, don't freak out, mm -hmm. right? And then we don't know what happens. And then we cut back, right? And I think that's some good storytelling in the sense that like, because I remember, I think a, a lot of the sentiment of this film was that like, the twist was so dumb. Yeah. It's so dumb. Why? Just, of course, the, the parents were just doing that. But again, it's like, one, I don't think we were ready to process this film. No, and 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 I think I think he was he was processing. He uh -huh. himself was processing what he, what nine eleven meant for him it, and for yeah. his family. Yeah, right. Because keep in mind, like he 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 he's he's darker skin. He's in it, yeah. Right, he's uh, and 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 so like he probably he and his kids family, many times I'm sure were uh, looked at looked at differently post nine eleven. Hundred percent. Right, and so like he, I think he also is processing seeing, processing through this script what he's trying to navigate post nine eleven, and yeah. and I think you're right. Like we as a as a as an audience weren't ready maybe for for this movie and and i mean now as a father i look at this movie completely differently Dude, no so different like i this film like if you if you didn't go see this movie to in preparation for this film you messed up for this podcast yes what yeah what did i say phil for this if you didn't watch this movie in preparation for this film no uh for this podcast go on um stop go watch it go watch it come back and like or, or or come back to this video and comment your thoughts on it i really do want to know what you guys are thinking about this because like i don't know even if today we're ready for this film yeah yeah there's there's a line and i did write it down um that Brend brendan gleason's character says he says you may run from sorrow as we have but sorrow will find you yeah yeah right yeah. And 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 I think they, as parents, as these elders uh, of this community, how do they deal with 
with sorrow, with pain, with conflict that impacts their families, right? And, and, and I think that's, that's what's being said here. However, I have one big issue, and that's, that's a character of Noah. Um, okay. Bef can we... I'll pause. Tell me your final I just, thoughts. I just... Here. I want... I think Sigourney Weaver also emphasizes this fact. Yeah. One, Sigourney Weaver is in this movie. Okay? <laughs> I forgot Sigourney Weaver was in this movie. Yeah. And uh, yet again, a beauty to have Sigourney Weaver on screen. She's great. Always She's so great. phenomenal. With... I don't know. Just so great. But her conversation with Lucius at the dinner table also emphasizes the fact that like listen like the box we have uh he says to her we have is it evidence or like rem, uh like reminders at every corner in this there are secrets Se yeah 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 in every right and then Sigourney says like they I've put those away to not worry right to like forget about them yet they live in a giant box that is keeping them there overall metaphorically speaking in this world where their children can't can't understand because they have no context or you know understanding their hope to help make it simpler and and greater is the detriment to to not all but to some <laughs> which brings me to Noah who I have beef with <laughs> I I have. <laughs> did you know that Ashton Kutcher was originally cast to play the character no. of Noah? No, I did not. And he wasn't good enough, so that they. <laughs> I mean, he's too good looking. <clears throat> so then they brought uh, Adrian Brody in. Um, but uh, here's my issue with this movie, and and this is the one major issue I have. The movie's telling us, right, and again, going back to that quote that you may run from sorrow as we have, but sorrow will find you. They have built this perfect society, so to speak. They don't, they, he even says, right, we don't, we don't deal with money and you yeah. don't want to know anything about money because yeah. it's horrible, et cetera. Um, he positions this uh, individual, Noah, who has development disabilities, mental disabilities, as the as the problem that then moves the the causes the yeah the the actual so like the whole like i mean the, it, we get the the whole idea is that like they want to solve like lucia's character wants to help this the the village by going to the outer villages to get medicine yeah right and yet the big factor that motivates it is Noah's character is, is Noah's character the 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 evil of the towns is now plagued in this village by a character that is mentally uh, underdeveloped yeah right has a disability and I just don't like that I don't like that for him he has to say we have a perfect society and the the evils the pure evils of the towns that plague the towns has seeped into our village through this mentally disabled character um and i think if i could do a rewrite in this movie mm. it would be that the character of brendan gleason okay yeah whose son died at the beginning yeah S say you you leave him with two kids one passes away one dies the other son gets so angry that they're here that they can't go to the towns to get to get um the medicines right and that anger boils up in him and now he starts committing these these stabbings right and and, and causing this mayhem, mayhem An un right yeah. that sorrow or or the violence of the towns does follow them that you can escape these things right it's how you react to it but choosing a, a character that's mentally disabled to drive that message is such a cop out. It me. is, yeah. What, okay. Do you have a theory on why he decided? Like, you think it's? Do you think it's like he didn't have? Like, look, 
you, you said we said it earlier in the pod. Is that he was just still processing, and he's like, I need, I need something to motivate this. This is a character that you know he's upset because he, we know that Noah loves Ivy. Yeah, yeah, right. But he's unstable. Like he's he's underdeveloped, and like in the society, Ivy's ready. Like her sister, which, sorry, real side note. Uh, what's uh, what's her bucket's name? Um, from the the older sister, Ivy's Kitty. Older, Kitty. <laughs> her her confession of to, love to Lucius. It's so great. Honestly, I do not know why we do not have this as a meme. This is, <laughs> I I should make it a meme. I just think it is truly a gem in in movie <laughs> history. I uh I I love it so much. Uh Judy Greer kills it. Yeah. I mean Judy Greer like she's always great. She's always like a fun character. And uh I just her commitment to that 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 one little monologue is truly <laughs> going back to going back to like the shooting of that scene. It's fun because it's it's an over the shoulder from from Lucius, Lucius. And we see a full shot of her. Yeah, it's like okay. far, far, and 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 she's emoting and expressing and like on her tippy toes, expressing her love, and then it cuts to Lucius. But for Lucius, it is a a closer shot. It's like from his chest up, and he's just like, uh, and then we cut to her crying later, <laughs> right? Like I just I, I, I love that decision there. Dude, I so love it. It's like. It truly is the gem. Of, yeah. It's like, it's not my favorite scene, but it's like my favorite moment. <laughs> yeah. It's a great moment. Um, but yeah, that's just how I feel about Noah. Like he, if, if, if you're trying to say that sorrow, that pain, that violence, that the vices of the towns tend to come in and how we react to him, why did you choose a, a character that is mentally um, unde- undeveloped um, to drive that? But to your question... M. Night Shyamalan has issues. I f- look, let's look back at his filmography. The character that kills Bruce Willis is a character who's in in Sixth Sense. Yeah, is is uh, an individual who's going through therapy, who has depression, and eventually commits suicide. Uh, Unbreakable. His villain is another disabled character. Um, here, he uses a disabled character. And so maybe, maybe he just, it's, it's a, look, look, it's a poor, it's a poor, uh, way of like interjecting some belief. I don't know. Yeah. Look, Knight, get that check, bro. There's therapy. (laughs) This episode is sponsored by better (laughs) help. Better help is doing more damage than than good. That's true. Uh, This, this episode is sponsored by our local therapists. (laughs) I'm like, I was trying to think about this when I, as I was, I'm like, why would he, I'm like, it does, it's not strong enough for me to feel like this is, he's upset that he stole his love. No, but, but here's the thing. Like clearly this character, you wrote him to like be unstable, not just mentally, but like he, he's constantly picking fights, right? Yeah. With, with the other people. And, and he, he's the one that's skinning the animals yeah. and dropping them off. So he has these violent tendencies. Yeah. And, and that's, and, and then he, he, who's, he, whose son is he? I can't remember. He's that couples, the couples. Son, yeah. Right. Yeah. And, and so then like, so you, you write this character who, who is violent, who's aggressive, who's, who obviously needs help. Right. But I would have just, I would have just not done a, uh, an individual who, Obviously, has mental um, underdeveloped just abilities. Maybe just make him. Uh, that's what I, I would have just made regular person, uh, but like maybe resentful slash resentful. Why are we here? Why can't we go psychopathic out? Psychopathic or something, right? And then th- I think that drives your point more forward. More of no matter where we go, no, and no matter how much we try to protect and isolate, there is always the risk of of, of the natural. A natural tendency of somebody who, oh. who might be more violent, yeah, and and trigger something or what? Yeah, I don't disagree. Look, um, 
Yeah, I don't know. I think at the end of the day, like, I'm glad we revisited this yeah. film. I, I don't know. I do think people should revisit this film. Yeah. It, it, it And and really, we should, like, people, We I'd love to really hear from our fans, from you guys, in the comments below. Or if you're listening to us on on, uh, on wherever you get your podcasts, um, to hop over, to send us an email, uh, you're at realchums.com, or to go to YouTube and, and comment with it. Because, like, I think this needs to be a big conversation. Like, there's, there's, I think we need to process this, this, this film in the overall bigger picture. You know, what is, what can we learn? Like, what lessons are there that, that are beneficial? Or, I don't know. Yeah. Maybe we've already answered that. I'm appreciative that he, like, we have this film from a perspective of somebody to start a conversation about it. Definitely. And I think that's like, again, it's just another perspective. Like, why films are great. Sometimes films aren't going to be good, but they make you think. They make you think, and 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 that's why we have this podcast to analyze and discuss. What are they trying to say? How does it relate to us? What can we take away from it? My last uh, bit of uh, knowledge here. Do it. So this movie, a year before its release, the script was leaked on the internet. Okay, and a lot of people were like, "Oh, so that's the twist that it's actually in present times." Okay, it's the only script of his that was ever leaked. It was ruined. So then, and the movie ended with her, uh, with Ivy getting to the trail, and then, and then hitting that wall or that fence, yeah. and then it cuts with as she's climbing up to like get over to the other side, and that's how the movie ended. So they went back and reshot the whole ranger guy finding her yeah getting the medication i actually i will i will say that's interesting because i actually really thought that some of the reason why i found this film maybe better i don't know if we it was changed or, anyways um is i really the the sh i love when the major comes in and he's being grilled by his manager mm -hmm. who we get a newspaper like Telling violent. telling you all the horrible things all, happening. All the horrible things. And him saying the comment is like, listen, just don't cause me any problems because we're not supposed to have it. We're not, don't talk to anybody. Because I don't want any to talk. To, I don't have to deal with anything because we don't, we're not supposed to have anybody flying over this, this yeah. property. Right. And the lengths that uh, the elders, the elders the, went to. Walker, yeah. Walker went to, to ensure their safety, but also like how much this individual like this manager like didn't quite he didn't care yeah like he's like i don't want this i don't want this to be a problem we're just just do your job yeah right and it's not even like well what is this really like we're just supposed to walk around make sure things are going good mm -hmm. right um but that he's helping in secret yeah i don't know i don't know i don't know i haven't fully thought why that is there i just do i really appreciate like the manager being like not a jerk, but like pessimistic about pessimistic it. Yeah. about it all. Yeah, I I do think it, it would have made for a better like ending. Ending. I I I feel like that the whole sequence was like maybe like a studio note given to him, be like, look, people are gonna ask questions. You need to give us some exposition. And <laughs> like you went and like wrote that whole thing out uh, and shot it. It also I think he probably because his script got leaked, he was like, okay, well can I do to like jazz it up and change it up or whatever. So, um, which is unfortunate. People don't, don't do that. Don't, don't leak stuff. Don't leak stuff. Um, great conversation. Do so good. I'm glad we did this. I hope you enjoyed it just as much as we did. We'd love it. If you could subscribe wherever your podcast or on YouTube, if you enjoyed this episode, be sure to leave us a review because it really does help us get discovered or share it with one, just one of your friends. And more importantly, we want to hear from you. What do you think of The Village? Please comment, go revisit, come back and listen to this. Let us know what you think, what we missed. You can always connect with us on all of our socials at Real Chums. Um, or feel free to email us at your at realchums.com. You can find me on Twitter at Marstrosity, M-A-R-C-T-R-O-S-I-T-Y. You can find me at Rubio underscore TV or Rubio.TV on other social platforms. And join us next week as we continue our month-long series of spooky thrillers, horrors with The Ring.
Dude, I am ex- so excited to talk about this. I don't think you are, but I no. am so excited to talk you, about this. No, I think I am excited to talk about this. I mean, like, I don't know. I'm excited to talk about all the movies we talked about. Um, For those of you that can't see Danny, his face, he's totally lying. <laughs> go go to YouTube and look at him as he's saying, oh, yeah, I'm, I'm totally exciting. excited. He is shaking. I'm also super tired. <laughs> <laughs> so no, go watch no, The Ring. I, I'm excited. I've, I haven't seen this movie in uh, the sea. Like... Yeah. Six, 14 years, fifteen. It's years? It's been like fifteen years for me. Fifteen years. Yeah. Um. And you said that there's somebody out there that says this might be a per- perfect. Look, I saw an article. Script. Yeah, we're gonna talk about it next week. But this has been. I saw an article like two years ago saying this is a n- nearly perfect screenplay. All right. Well, let, I'm excited to talk about it. Okay. See you in the next one. Later. Later.